What's going on everybody? I am here to do a review for probably one of the most phenomenal movies that I have seen not only this year but in the last few years and that is Respect. First off, I'm going to just go ahead and get my rating right now before I get into it. This movie gets a full blown 10 out of 10 for me. This movie was, in my opinion, perfection. This is how a biopic should be done. A lot of people need to take notes on how a biopic should be done and this is exactly where you can pull from. But before I get into it, I have to, you know, give my condolences and, you know, RIP to the Queen of Soul herself, Aretha Franklin. Definitely an icon, definitely a trendsetter. She paved the way for a lot of people in the industry to this day. A lot of people who came before her ended up looking up to her, seeing her as an inspiration and seeing how wonderful of a woman she was. And I'm so glad that we were able to get a piece of her life um, share with us in the span of two and a half hours on this uh, on this magnitude and I have to definitely give kudos to Aretha Franklin Miss Aretha Franklin for allowing Jennifer Hudson to play her because before she passed one of the things she said if there was ever a biopic done about her life she would want Jennifer Hudson to play her and she definitely made the right choice because Jennifer Hudson is Aretha Franklin as far as a awesome portrayal of this icon this legend this pioneer like everything about her you know it just makes you want to like after watching the movie it's gonna make you want to go and listen to her catalog like from beginning to end all of her hits what or songs that weren't hits like you're just gonna want to go and listen to all of that and really dive deep into her her um her catalog like I said so, I feel like I really don't have to give a whole synopsis about this. The movie was basically, a bi like I said, it was a biopic about Aretha Franklin's life, starting when she was a little girl, all the way up to, it only went up to 1972. It didn't go past 1972, um, which is perfectly fine, because those are like the, a huge prime of, of her career, like a huge uh, main part of her career comes from those particular years and man did they go deep with some of the stuff because I have always heard stories about stuff that has happened in Aretha Franklin's personal life but I didn't think they would actually translate it over onto screen and they did exactly just that especially with this one part in there um her getting pregnant at a very young age basically through rape like that part like you know when they actually showed that they didn't actually show the the her part of, the, of her being molested but they actually showed the part where she was a young girl and she was pregnant. So, and they even pretty much show the person who is responsible for getting her pregnant and where she got um, molested at. And this probably was going on on multiple occasions. It had to have been on multiple occasions. But I'm glad they actually touched on that a little bit. But there was three main performances in this movie that solidified it for me. The first one is the obvious, and that is Jennifer Hudson. Jennifer Hudson, she knocked it out of the park with this role. I had no doubt in my mind, in my soul, that she was going to kill this part, that she was going to absolutely demolish this part. I can't see anybody else being Aretha Franklin, even that other person, and we know exactly who I'm talking about when I say that. But... Or, uh, Jennifer Hudson, she put everything she had into this, and you can tell she really did her research. I actually saw an interview with her where she was talking about how she really didn't know how to play the piano that well, but she was willing to learn how to play it instead of having her pretend like she was playing the piano because Aretha Franklin knew how to play it. And she said, no, I'm going to learn how to play it, you know, so it could be authentic. So not only was she playing the piano, but she was also using her own voice. Of course, we know Jennifer Hudson is a phenomenal, powerful singer. She was not going to lip sync anything that she did with this particular role over a track. So she lent her own voice and she literally was hitting all the notes like when I was hearing her sing I heard a mix of herself plus Aretha Franklin not all of just her so that was just amazing just to actually uh, hear that one scene that actually got me was the part where she was singing in the church for Martin Luther King's funeral because she was really close with Dr. King that part right there actually made my eyes water, water up a little bit and a little side note if you do plan on seeing this movie, you might want to carry yourself a couple of boxes of Kleenex because you probably will cry at a couple of parts in the movie. I'm just saying. I was in there with a lot of people. I kept hearing people sniffing and 
wiping their eyes and everything. So you're gonna get a lot of this a ball of emotions when it comes to this movie. You like you have a little bit of you have a lot of drama. You have a you know some com you know some laughing parts in there. Not too much. They didn't. They're not gonna hit you over the head with that because it's not the type of movie. But the drama was definitely there, and Jennifer Hudson definitely did what she could with this role and she knocked it out of the park. I predict that she's probably going to get a lot of nominations. I have a feeling this movie as a whole is going to get a lot of nominations. I predict that's what's going to happen. And even if it doesn't, it is what it is. We really don't chase after these award nominations, but if they get them, congrats to them and kudos to them either way. But Jennifer Hudson definitely killed this role. Like This is probably one of the best roles she will ever play. Not saying she's not going to play any other role um, you know past this but this one right here literally in my opinion solidifies her because it's very hard to do a biopic the correct way and she did that you can tell she did her research she's definitely had conversations with Aretha Franklin before she passed and I'm glad that Aretha Franklin was actually able to have some input on this before she passed because I believe she died back in 2018 and they had already been working on the film prior to that but I'm glad that she actually was able to get some input with the cast and the crew and whoever was working on it to lend her voice after all the movie is about her and her life and her family and her associates and people that she worked with and just like i said legendary the next performance that was great was forrest whitaker now forrest whitaker played the father to Aretha Franklin. He was basically a pastor in the church. He basically knew that Aretha Franklin had talent. He always had these little parties where he would have Aretha sometimes get out get out of bed in the middle of the night to come downstairs and entertain the crowd. And they already knew when she came into the room that people was gonna love when she was a sing because she had such a powerful voice for a girl who was only 10. And one of the people in the, um, in the cast said, and asked how old she was, they said she's 10, but her voice sounds like she's going on 30. Basically saying she is a 10 year old little girl with the voice of a 30 year old woman when she sings. Like, and she definitely could sing. I wonder if that the little girl that they cast to play Aretha Franklin actually was singing. Because if so, she could really sing. Like that girl was singing without even trying. And I predict that's how Aretha Franklin was when she was a little girl. But Forrest Whitaker played her father, he was a pastor. He entertained a lot of people. He always he knew that Aretha Franklin had talent, but you can tell that he was a very strict disciplinarian type of father. Like he did things by the book or so he showed or seemingly did. And he basically, you know, when it came to her father, it kind of reminds you of the hypocrisy that you see from a lot of black people when it comes to the church, like black Christians and everything like that. And I'm glad they kind of touched on that as well. Like they really hit some points in this movie when it came to you know certain subject matters and the you know black christians and hypocrisy was one of those subjects that actually came up in the movie about you know he portrayed himself being this you know perfect person but behind the scenes he really wasn't that he wasn't really that good of a person he really tried to mold uh aretha into an image that he wanted her to be in even though she knew that him being there or as a manager was going to be a huge hindrance to her career right before it really kicked off. I mean, taking her to go to this uh, big record label in New York to do a certain type of music that she w that she didn't want to do to the point where he was literally micromanaging every single point of her career without her having any type of input into which direction she wanted her career to go in. And it's a good thing she had to break away from him because if she didn't, she would have been stuck, and she probably wouldn't even be known, to be quite honest. Kind of reminds me of how Janet Jackson was with her father, who, of course, is Joe Jackson. That's what she did when she first started out. A lot of people only know Janet from Control on, but forget that she had, like, two whole albums before then that was managed by her dad, Joe Jackson, but then she felt like it was too much, and she couldn't really have a voice. So she broke away from him and then got with Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis and created Control, and history came became history after that was album was made and that was the whole point of the album was control was her having control over her her artistry and of her music so i kind of found the parallels there between those two right then i wonder if janet jackson actually feels the same way if she knew the story of aretha franklin or if she has to see this movie to understand like wow looking at this i can see that's that's my life a little bit right there when it comes to the music industry and um but Forrest Whitaker definitely gave a great performance because, you know, he's always going to give a good performance. He always plays, you know, very phenomenal roles whenever he gets a script and he does what he does um, with it. Now, 
the last performance I want to talk about is from none other than Marlon Wayans. Listen and listen closely. After seeing this, if anyone doubts that Marlon Wayans does not know how to act outside of comedy, you need your head, your ears, and your eyes examined because apparently all three of them or a few of them or one of them is not working. He absolutely amazed me with his performance as Ted White. Ted White was the first husband to Aretha Franklin. Now, I had heard stories about Ted White, but I did not do research about who he was. But after seeing Marlon Wayans' portrayal in this movie, this man was a monster. He made how they had Ike Turner portrayed in What's Love Got to Do With It look like an amateur in some aspect. This guy, Ted White, presented himself, you know, almost like a charismatic person. He knew Aretha Franklin was the was the daughter of a pastor. He knew that she some he 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 knew that she had some kind of naivety about herself. And one thing I will give for us with a character's credit on is he knew what type of man Ted White was when he tried to start talking to Aretha. And I think it's because in some aspect he saw himself in her from a pre, uh, prior relationships with Aretha, Aretha's and her siblings' mother. Because you know, um, their mother, they had a very toxic relationship, which is why they were never together. You know, the mother would take her and her siblings for like the weekend and then they would come back. So it was like they had joint custody of the children, but they stayed with their dad more because the dad made more money being a pastor. But I think he saw a parallel between the two of them. So if I had to give Forrest Whitaker's character credit, it would, because it would be that he knew what type of person Ted White was. And he knew that Aretha, being the type of person she is, she was going to just fall for him instantly because she was always sheltered as a child. So, you know, it's, you know he just knew who he was. But Marlon Wayans as Ted White, just an excellent performance i would not be surprised going back to the whole award stuff and i know we don't care about it but i just got to put it out there i would not be surprised if marlon wayans gets so many award nominations in the supporting actors categories i would not be surprised he literally was not the marlon wayans from scary movie he was not the marlon wayans from the wayans brothers he wasn't the marlon wayans that was always the goofy, make you laugh type of person. He was Ted White, the overbearing, narcissistic, think he knows everything, abusive, both verbal and physical husband to Aretha Franklin. His performance has to be one of the best performances I have seen in a supporting role all year and i mean just that like it just i can't even put into words how amazing he played that role it like when i looked at it i did not see marlon wayans which is perfect and it, you know what's so crazy a lot of people when he they found out he was cast in his role for, for that role people was like marlon wayans He's playing this kind of character. I said, give him a chance. He might actually surprise you. And that's what I, one thing I've always said. A lot of people who always are seen as funny are usually locked into a box in, of being funny. They can never claw, them way, claw their way out of the box. But he did. In this role right here, I hope this opens up the door for Marlon Wayans to get more serious dramatic roles because in this role right here he proved he can do it and not only that he's playing a actual character he's an actual person he's not playing someone who was created he's playing someone who actually existed who actually did the things that he did he played Aretha Franklin's first husband and he played it very very well. I tip my hat off to Marlon Wayans. 
and you can tell by the way I'm talking about his character that he, I really like. I really like. I didn't like his character, but I like how he was portrayed. So, just to put it out there, Ted White was in shit. Let's just put it like that. He just wasn't like he literally. Like if you see the movie, you'll see what type of person he was. Like he was very controlling. He was overbearing. Like I said, he was narcissistic. He had a major ego. He was abusive, physical, and verbal. But Marlon Wayans convinced me he convinced the audience that ted white was this monster that he just was an ancient nigga let's just put it what it is like he just really wasn't in the quiet as it's kept a lot of the men that was around aretha wasn't shit to be quite honest until she met the guy she ended up being with at the end that's when she finally found someone that she could find some bit of happiness with because in a way her dad wasn't shit Ted White definitely was the poster child of the, of the phrase. But then she ended up meeting another guy who she worked with. And, you know, he was a much better fit for her. And I think she needed that. But um, a couple of my favorite scenes in this movie was when she had the breakdown. You know, she was going at her family. Um, I didn't really know Aretha Franklin went through all of that. That's why I like these type of movies. I didn't know she went through all of that. Like, she had a drinking binge. Like, she was, like, not strong. He was on, on drugs. But she had a huge alcohol problem. I'm talking about the scene when she was in her home, when she was in L.A., when she woke up. she Her hair was all messed up. She had liquor bottles all over the place, waking up to a glass of wine she could barely see. One part in the movie is she's performing, she's on stage stumbling, she almost bumps into her sister because her, her sisters were her backup singers. And then when she's performing, she literally falls and face plants on, off of the stage onto the floor while she's on tour because she's so um, intoxicated. I didn't know that she went through all of that and then you know to you know for her to recover herself and to build herself back up to the point of where she is you know up until she passed um that's just it's just crazy but it's so many things that went on in this movie that was one of my uh, favorite scenes of course jennifer hudson singing just was amazing in some moments i had to close my eyes and kind of kind of in my way i kind of heard Aretha Franklin because their voices was almost parallel at that point I was like okay is this Jennifer Hudson singing or is this a, a track uh, Aretha Franklin track so their voices in some aspects were kind of parallel so that's a very very good thing as well but there's so much more I could say about this movie but I want y'all to go and experience it for yourself and as a matter of fact the movie that I went to almost every showing was sold out like that's crazy this movie was like you had a movie selling out where some comic book movies that have come out couldn't even do that. So that's saying a lot. So I definitely, I really enjoyed this movie. I would definitely watch it again. And I highly, highly recommend that anybody who is watching right now to go out and watch and support this film because it is definitely, definitely one of the best movies you will watch this year. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and end this review. Y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments and I'll talk to you in the next one.